Hi there, I'm Dr. Percy McRae, and today I'll be talking a little bit about equine exercise physiology. So when we look at horses competing in different disciplines or events, we can begin to understand or appreciate just how varied the skill sets as well as the athletic efforts are of each of those events. So if we think about what's required of a barrel racer, that's very different than what's required of our standard bred trotters or our thoroughbred racehorses or our endurance racehorses. And all of those efforts are very different from the efforts that are required of our show jumpers or our dressage horses or our polo ponies. But despite this really wide variety of skill sets and athletic efforts involved, horses seem to be able to perform very well in each of these disciplines. So horses are naturally really great athletes, but how do they do it? What makes them able to perform better than humans and many other mammals? There are some key physiologic attributes of the horse that allow them to perform at such a high level. So we're gonna talk about all of these today, but overall, horses have a very high maximal aerobic capacity or high VO2 max. They also have a very high oxygen carrying capacity of their blood, as well as large intramuscular energy stores and high muscle mitochondrial volumes. Exercise, whether it's jumping or a collected trot or reining, all it is are muscles contracting. And every time a muscle contracts, it uses energy in the form of ATP. So the horse's metabolism then needs to increase to replace that used up ATP. They need to create new energy so that they can continue to exercise or continue to perform. And that metabolic rate is going to depend on the supply of the substrate, or basically our starting ingredient, for example, glycogen stored within the muscle, as well as oxygen. So the horse needs to be able to get oxygen from outside its body, from the atmosphere, all the way to their mitochondria to be able to produce energy to continue to perform. So you can begin to understand how integrated the cardiovascular and respiratory systems are in enabling the horse to exercise. So I wanna start off with a little bit of the unique anatomy of the horse in terms of their upper airways. So if I asked you to go for a light jog, you'd probably breathe through your nose. But if I asked you to jog a little bit faster or run for longer, eventually you'd probably switch to breathing through your mouth. And the reason that you do this is because your body has an increased demand for oxygen, which means that you're going to do everything you can to reduce the resistance to airflow. So by breathing through your mouth, you're using a larger opening, which has less resistance, which equals more airflow. Horses, however, cannot do this. Horses are what we call obligate nasal breathers, which means they only breathe through their nose, and they don't breathe through their mouths. So instead, they have to employ other strategies to increase their ability to bring air in by reducing resistance. One strategy is that the mucosa that lines their upper airways will actually change to enlarge the passage. And another strategy is that as horses gallop, they'll actually extend their head out to strain their neck more to also enable greater airflow or less resistance because it's a more direct path for the oxygen or for the air to take. The lower airway is composed of the trachea, which is that long tube, which then branches into the two bronchi, which branch further smaller into the bronchioles and eventually the alveoli. And the alveoli is the site of gas exchange. What I mean by that is that's the location where we're going to have blood coming in contact with the oxygen that the horse has breathed in to pick up that oxygen to then enter the circulation. Horses have a very large set of lungs that are capable of moving large amounts of air but that air also needs to travel all the way from the nose all the way to the lungs, which is about two meters long. So you can begin to realize that there are many locations where things can go slightly awry and that may limit how much oxygen that horse is able to bring in, which will directly impact their ability to perform. The VO2 max or the maximal aerobic capacity of the horse refers to the maximum rate of oxygen consumption. So what this means is it's the maximum amount or the most oxygen that the horse can bring into their body and actually send to their tissues to be consumed for energy production or that production of ATP that we talked about earlier. So this is dependent on the ability of the respiratory system to bring oxygen from the environment into the lungs, but also the ability of the 
um, blood to actually pick up that oxygen, as well as the ability of the cardiovascular system to effectively pump that blood that's carrying the oxygen all the way to the tissues to be used. Horses have a very large VO2 max. In fact, a horse's VO2 max is about 2.6 times greater than a cow's and about two to two and a half times greater than a human athlete's. A thoroughbred racehorse will have a VO2 max of about 180 to about 200 milliliters of oxygen per kilogram of body weight per minute, compared to the highest ever recorded in a human who is a cyclist of 97 and a half. So you can see that there must be something going on that enables horses to have such a high VO2 max which explains part of why horses have such an amazing athletic capacity. So VO2 max, as we mentioned, is not only going to be dependent on the respiratory system, but the respiratory system working very closely with the cardiovascular system. So when a horse is at rest, they'll take about 16 breaths per minute, but when they exercise, that will increase to about 100 to 180 breaths per minute, which allows them to move over 1,500 liters of air every single minute because of that large set of lungs that they have. The heart rate will also increase in response to exercise. So when a horse is at rest, standing calmly in their stall, they'll have a heart rate of about 35 beats per minute. But when they're exercising, that can increase from about 220 to 240 beats per minute, resulting in about 250 to 450 liters of blood being moved every minute by the heart. So how are horses able to move this much blood around their body? What enables their heart to push out or to eject this much blood? Well, it doesn't have to do with the heart rate. It's not that the heart is just beating so quickly, because in fact, the maximum heart rate that we see in people is very similar to the maximum heart rate that we see in horses. Instead, it has to do with the size of the horse's heart. Because it's so large, it's able to eject a large amount of blood with each beat. From both a health and fitness standpoint, we're very interested in monitoring the horse's cardiovascular response to exercise. And we can use ECGs or electrocardiograms, as well as simple heart rate meters to do this. So we can look at things like the maximum heart rate, or when we see the heart rate plateau, despite an increase in speed or exercise intensity. This doesn't tell us a lot about the horse's fitness level though, because maximum heart rate doesn't increase with training. However, we can look at their V200 or their V heart rate max. So V just stands for speed. So what this means is the speed at which heart rate equals 200 beats per minute or the speed at which the horse reaches their maximum heart rate. And so what we want to see is that as a horse becomes more fit or more trained, we have increased speeds occurring at the same heart rates. So it becomes physically easier for the horse to achieve that level of work. Similarly, we can look at their heart rate recovery or the duration of time that it takes after exercising for their heart rate to return back to their resting levels. So in addition to being able to move large amounts of oxygen into their body and then pump that blood very effectively, the horse also needs to be able to hold that oxygen within the blood very well. And so that comes down to the oxygen carrying capacity of the blood or the ability of the, ox of the blood to bind oxygen. So when a horse begins to exercise, they have a very unique adaptation that allows their spleen to contract. And as the spleen contracts, it releases about 12 liters of blood, which is about 80% red blood cells. So those red blood cells are going to enable the blood to more effectively carry more oxygen. And it's the same phenomenon as what's seen as blood doping in humans. So it enhances performance. So a horse at rest will have a hematocrit or a percentage of red blood cells of about 32%. And during exercise, this will double to 65%. Beyond just having the incredible ability to carry that oxygen, we need to deliver it to the muscles so that the muscles can consume it as they produce more energy. So muscles have very dense capillary networks to allow for better oxygen delivery. They also have very active enzymes that are required to utilize that energy and high amounts of mitochondria, which are the organelles within the cells that are responsible for actually producing the energy required for contraction. So horses have about double the amount of mitochondria that cattle have, which again explains in part why horses are much more athletic than a cow. Interestingly, during exercise, Horses actually are not able to keep up with the demands of that exercise from a respiratory standpoint. 
So even though we've talked lots about how the horse is able to bring large amounts of oxygen into its body, it's still not quite enough for the demands of that exercise. So we'll actually see that horses have low levels of oxygen and high levels of carbon dioxide with their blood at high exercise intensities. And this seems sort of counterintuitive. Why would they not have adapted to breathe differently to minimize these effects, to have more oxygen and less carbon dioxide? They've actually been able to tolerate these levels in an attempt to reduce the work associated with breathing. Basically, if they were to breathe as much as was actually physically required to meet those oxygen demands, they would use up a lot of energy just breathing. So when a horse is galloping, they are stuck in a one-to-one -one ratio of one breath to one stride. And the reason that they match their breathing to their strides is that they're able to basically piggyback on some of the processes already associated with locomotion that will also enable them to breathe without using so much extra energy. So as the forelimbs hit the ground, that concussive force is going to move up through the thorax of the horse and actually aid in the exhalation or the decrease in volume of the lungs. We also see um, inhalation and exhalation being associated with movement of the spine. So as the back shortens, the horse will inhale and as the back lifts and lengthens, the horse will exhale. So by coupling their locomotion with their respiration, the horse is able to actually reduce the amount of energy that it takes to breathe. So why do we care about the horse's respiratory and cardiovascular system so much? Even if we don't have Olympic level horses or race horses, what does it matter? Well, it's really important that we're staying in tune with our horse's overall health and performance because disorders of the respiratory system are the most frequently diagnosed conditions in sport horses that are evaluated for poor performance and respiratory conditions are one of the main causes of training disruption. So even though horses have an amazing ability to bring oxygen in, they've got a very well adapted respiratory system, a very well adapted cardiovascular system, it's still really important that we're closely monitoring their responses to exercise and their overall health and fitness. So we see many, many sport horses, even at a low level, being affected by things like asthma that are going to not only influence their performance, but also their overall health. We also see disorders of the cardiovascular system impacting our horse's health and welfare and performance. Arrhythmias or irregular heart rhythms at rest and or during exercise may be clinically irrelevant and not affect the horse in any way, but they may also be life-threatening. In fact, fatal arrhythmias are the most likely cause of sudden death. So it's really important that if you're noticing that your horse has any sort of exercise intolerance, or if they seem very fatigued, or if they're unwilling to work, that you're working closely with your vet and other care providers to make sure that their respiratory and cardiovascular systems are both performing well to enable them to be in good health and also perform at a high level.